Hi everybody, it's Wednesday, November 16th, 2016. This is Steve Olson, WSO. Yeah, it's getting a little scary these days, ain't it? Um, big 7.8 earthquakes, and I wonder how DASA feels <laughs> these days uh, about the uh, about Nibiru. Anyway. Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Friday, November 18, 2016. And this is a look at one of the latest videos by WSO Steve Olson. WSO November 17, Moon Tilt is going crazy. And uh, as you've heard in his introduction, he wonders how Dazza is going at the moment with the magnitude 7.8 earthquake. Well, as I've already pointed out in my previous videos, New Zealand is on a very active fault line and has a long history of powerful earthquakes. And where was New Zealand's largest earthquake? It was magnitude 8.2 Wairarapa earthquake in 1855. I wonder if Nibiru Planet X was responsible for that earthquake in 1855. Or what about if we scroll down and we take a look at the long history of powerful earthquakes in New Zealand going back a long time. Ah, uh, let's have a look. We've got a magnitude 7.5 on uh, the top of the South Island in 1848. Maybe Nibiru Planet X was responsible for that. What about the magnitude 7.8 earthquake in Murchison in 1929? Maybe Nibiru Planet X was responsible for that. What about the Anangahua magnitude 7.1 in 1968? Nibiru Planet X, maybe. Or the North Canterbury magnitude 7.3 in 1888? Maybe that was Nibiru Planet X as well. Um, what about the Dusky Sound earthquake magnitude 7.8 in 2009? Well, how about we go up to Edgecombe? Because I really remember this one because I live not too far away from here. And this was on the 2nd of March 1987. There was a very damaging magnitude 6.5 earthquake in the Bay of Plenty. Uh, maybe Nibiru Planet X was responsible for that earthquake in 1987. As you can see as we look at this chart, there's plenty of powerful earthquakes to choose from. Uh, so Some of them are in the lower magnitude 6 range, um, but they were shallow enough to be quite damaging. Uh, such as this one in December 23rd, 2011, New Brighton, Christchurch, magnitude 6.0. Um, and we see that there is a long history of powerful earthquakes in New Zealand. Does this mean that they were caused by Nibiru Planet X? Of course not. In my previous video, we looked at this animated chart showing New Zealand's year of earthquakes animated. Let's take another look at this map, and this is one year of earthquakes in 2014. So let's look at all of these earthquakes that are going off. It looks like we should be um, shaking every day, but remember that a lot of these earthquakes are actually very deep down. Not all of them are felt. I certainly felt the earthquake the other night, um, but that was a long way off. I felt it as a gentle swaying motion. I didn't even realize that it was an earthquake at first. It took me a while to realize what was going on. Um, but there are certainly a lot of powerful earthquakes that go off that uh, we never feel because they're either too deep down or they're too far away from our locations in New Zealand. But you can see from this chart that New Zealand is a very active fault line. Uh, this is simply because of the geology of where New Zealand sits on the Pacific Rim of Fire. And uh, this is nothing unusual. No, there is not a magnitude 7.8 earthquake every day or even every year, but they do happen from time to time as we saw in the previous chart. Now addressing the title of this video, Moon Tilt is Going Crazy, let's take a look at that as we step ahead in the video. So this is February 21st, 2013, and this is the moon from Rockford, Wisconsin. This is an astronomer that has been studying the moon himself for a long time. Okay, this is the moon, uh, same day, same, or I'm sorry, uh, in November of 2016, moon, and a similar, you know, moon. And what he's in terms of lit the area of the moon being lit this is slightly uh, almost full this is full but basically the tilt that was analyzed using his you know by calculating the movement of all of these different objects he figured a 65 degree tilt from rockford michigan 
Now, if that wasn't disturbing enough, we end up with, in one day period, 110 degrees. So we swung another almost 50 degrees in one day from the 12th to the 13th. And that is just a little bit disconcerting. Um, no, it's not disconcerting at all. Uh, not when you actually know what you're looking at and not when you actually know what you're talking about. And this guy obviously isn't an astronomer, otherwise he would know what he's looking at and he would know what he's talking about. I've already covered this sort of thing before in years gone by, talking about the rotation of the moon and what causes it. There are a couple of things that come into play. One is called field rotation, which is a result of the moon crossing the sky. Now, unless you're using an equatorial mount telescope, which compensates for the field rotation, Yes, the moon is going to appear to rotate as it goes across the sky. Now, I'm going to demonstrate that in, in one of my past videos in just a moment. The other thing that's going to affect the apparent angle of the moon is your latitude. And many people are aware that the moon appears to be upside down when viewed from the southern hemisphere compared to when viewed from the northern hemisphere. So let's take a look at this video that I uploaded a couple of years ago explaining field rotation of the moon. This is my video, Has Nibiru Caused the Moon to Tilt on Its Axis? And when did I upload this video? I uploaded that on November the 9th, 2011. Five years ago. When people were saying back then that Nibiru Planet X was causing the moon to tilt on its axis. Five years ago. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the video. Hello, in this video we're going to look at the claims made in many YouTube videos that the moon has strangely tilted or rotated on its axis in a way that it should not be. This is explained quite simply when we consider that the moon rises in the east, travels across the sky and sets in the west. In the northern hemisphere the moon will cross over in the southern sky and in the southern hemisphere the moon will cross over in the northern sky. I am in the Southern Hemisphere. Let's have a look at this video of this Concorde aircraft flying across the sky from east to west as if we are looking north. This is the sort of view that we would have from the Southern Hemisphere if we were comparing it to the Moon. Let's take another look and we'll take some photos this time as the aircraft fly over. Pointing north east. Pointing north and pointing northwest. Now let's take a look at our photos. We can see now that the angle that the aircraft are pointing in our photographs are quite different in each photo. And in exactly the same way, we will see that the moon appears to change its angle as it travels across the sky. Thank you for watching, please be sure to check the description box for a link to our discussion page Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. Thank you. So back to Steve Olson's fear mongering video, November 17, Moon Tilt is going crazy. I have no doubt in my mind now that Steve Olson and company, that they know exactly what they're doing with their fear mongering. They know that they are presenting absolute nonsense. And for example here, this has already been debunked, the black spot in front of the sun. We know that this is the CMOS image sensor overloading because of the, the bright sun producing a zero value which is translated into video as a black dot. The black dot that we see there is actually the disk of the sun uh, and the rest of what we see is actually the glare as it has been refracted through the atmosphere. As for these apparent objects, they are lens flares, which is why they are in a straight line. Of course, you can get other lens flares that are not in a straight line, because there are all sorts of things going on with lenses and the camera, different layers and angles of refraction and all that sort of thing. But I think now 
that I cannot give Steve Olson the benefit of the doubt that maybe he was sincere and that he really believed what he is presenting because it seems now that he's just laughing his head off at his subscribers, at his viewers, who lap up all of this nonsense, and keep clicking on his videos and pushing up his YouTube earnings and buying his t-shirts and subscribing to his subscriber-only content and all of that sort of thing. He's laughing all the way to the bank. He's laughing in your faces. So I would welcome a live interview, a live debate, discussion with Steve Olson, either on his channel or on mine. Let's get together, Steve, and let's discuss your claims one to one. Let's take a look at the various images that you would like to present, and let's talk about them. Now, you said in a previous video that the debunkers would, would never take you on in a live debate because you said their handlers can't control them. Well, I don't have a handler, but I'm more than happy to engage in a live debate with you, Steve Olson. So you just name the time and the place, and we'll set up a, a live debate, and we can discuss your claims and these images. I will also be following through with what I said earlier, that I will be setting up a live YouTube Hangout where you will be invited along with plenty of notice and uh, you know if you don't turn up for the hangout well that's because you didn't have the testicular fortitude to show up and defend your claims. I've been debunking this sort of nonsense for five and a half years now and there's not too many topics especially astronomy related that I haven't covered already so please check out my playlist I'll put a link in the description area and uh, you can check out the different videos where I've debunked uh, different YouTubers um, such as BP Earthwatch, Dark Sky Watcher 74, Secure Team, Donnie Serpico, the Zero Zero Skyview Team, and many others. We've seen it all before. It's all the same old nonsense, fear-mongering rubbish that's been rehashed year after year after year. And people seem to have short memories and they keep saying that Nibiru Planet X is coming next week, next month, next year. And they seem to forget that these videos have been debunked year after year after year. And I fully expect that Steve Olson may well still be making these nonsense videos in another five years. And still laughing in the faces of his gullible subscribers. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.